This episode of Pucks Out Podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Action 24-7, Tennessee's only local legal sportsbook. Use code PUCKSOUT when you make your first deposit, and our friends over at Action 24-7 will give you a 50% boost on your first one. up to $800. That's right, up to $400 extra when you use code PUCKSOUT. And once again, as always, some amazing promos this week. Head over to our Twitter and Instagram, as well as Action's Twitter and Instagram, to be kept up to date throughout the week on all the best promos so you can make some money. And did you know you can gamble with cash? Are you tired of waiting on a sportsbook you won but can't get your money? No more waiting with Action 24-7. If you want to gamble with cash deposits and withdrawals, get started with Tennessee's local sportsbook today. Check out the link in the show description. Once again, use code PUCKSOUT. That's P-U-C-K-S-O-U-T. When you make your first deposit, and our friends at Action 24-7 will give you a 50% boost on your first deposit up to $800. What are you waiting for? From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome, welcome, welcome into the most ridiculous podcast in sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hello. You can find us on the three major social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this cold Mayday beer and let's get after. I got that angry redhead. I've got that, that soul, that soul dark lager, bro. You know, uh, hadn't had that in a bit. I just oh, got that's well, a good one. haven't had it in a bit. No, I got it all. It's everywhere. I'm going to have it there for a while. It'll be stuck in my computer nice. for, the, for the foreseeable future. So, um, so. Uh, Pucks Out is powered by Mayday Brewery, the official beer of Pucks Out Podcast. Join them every Tuesday for trivia and bingo Thursdays. We just had bingo night the other night. We hosted it uh, with, you know, we, well, when we hosted, we gave a, an assist to a uh, uh, good, right. good friend of the show, Harley, over there. She killed we, it. We killed it. We ran it. security. We ran security on the, it. The it got we some parts got a little weird. A lo, mm-hmm. Some parts got a lot of fun. Uh it was mm-hmm. a great night. Mm-hmm. We gave away some Preds tickets, gave away some NSC tickets, gave away some cheese uh standing so farm cheese kits. And um hey, uh the crowd got I turned the crowd against Brandon when it came to G. He did. So that's always a good yeah, that's always a great he time. <laughs> Turn to make turn them against me, and that's cool. I mean, that's what that's what yeah. that's what bingo is about. See, but what you didn't, yeah. you you were very nice about that because what you didn't tell them, you turned them against me after I tried to turn them against you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so this wasn't you know this wasn't uh, wasn't unforeseen. Uh, I mean, at the time it was, but uh, you know, so I mean, hey, we had a blast. You know, our only requirement you know most people go in they're like we need you know a bowl full of you know just green m and that's it that's yeah. all you can have for us this we're pretty easy the only thing we require is if there's a tie and bingo that there be a dance off and not oh, a yeah. rock paper scissors off and that i get to nick cannon host it that is it that that is the only thing you say no to that we're out we're walking out we'll take our creative licensure <laughs> elsewhere but we had a, we had a couple of dance battles, right? I mean, yeah, we had, we had a we, we had a three uh, a three entry one. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was hype. We had a, we had a really really good time. Love getting out there, uh, fill it up. We had to get up three four times, add more tables. So I'm I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping that our antics are made up for by all the money we bring in. So we get to keep yeah. doing the antics. I mean, that cause if the, cause antics for antics sake are, that's a, that's a no go, right? If we were just in there and it was like four people out in the crowd and we're just screaming and making people dance off and stuff, that's unacceptable, but you got a whole room full of people spending money. Then you can, then you can, then, yeah. you, can, then you can turn the crowd against your co-host and that's cool. <laughs> and, and everybody's cool with it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a really good time. Can't wait to go back. Uh, once again, thank you, Ozzy, for having us out there. Thank you, Mayday. And thank you, Harley, for putting up with us. And uh, um, happy late birthday to Kelsey. Yeah. As well. So, uh, but Hey, so uh, today we are covering the, obviously the Stanley cup champions. We're covering the Stanley cup finals. We're a bunch of soccer news. Talking Kenobi, uh, there'll be some spoilers in there, so be on the lookout for that. Um, 
joke of the week and much much more don't forget to check us out on patreon to get all the spicy bits a day early and check us out on twitch where you can uh join me uh for some games some drinking some beer you know maybe funneling a couple beers playing some you know and, and brandon Bro. can will join us every once in a while oh my gosh i've been saving up my points dude and i think i think one day i'm just gonna like go on there and just redeem them i all think as a moderator you don't have to use points i think as a moderator you could just use them for free as well yeah, i don't know if i, I should have told you that I've, but sure but i've got the points that wouldn't be fun i wouldn't be fun I, if i could just make <laughs> you drink like 15 beers that's no fun but i want to use these <laughs> well, a little bit of a cool down and uh no see that that's why i can use the points I can, I can use the points. I'm going to get you, uh, get you lit up. So, uh, yeah, man, you've been, you've been killing. You had a pretty good stream last night too, right? Uh, it was all right. You know, Mondays yeah. are usually our slowest is usually the slow night, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, but how, I mean, right, you yeah, doing let's, now? let's, oh, beer, do, doing good, dude. The beer, doing good, fest, you know, had a brother. beer the fest, beer uh, fest. beer fest was amazing. Ran into people we knew of, obviously, uh, cause it's us. Yeah. And Hey, it yep. was a great time with some great beers. We, Spent most good... of the time. Oh. Go ahead. We spent most of the time hanging out in the on the ice area, and finally, with about ninety minutes left, like, all right, guys, now it's a race. We got to get up to the the concourse and 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 run through these beers. We did though. We made it all the way around. We did and it. Actually, yeah. got back down on the floor. So I'm like, I was super proud of us there. Um, you know, we saw, like you said, we saw a bunch of people hung out hung out with uh with, with um a buddy of ours for most of the day, but you, you actually saw somebody you knew and I didn't know, which is a rarity. Yeah. Um, and so, but then I topped it off with seeing, uh, seeing old Kim there, my jury coordinator, uh, that, that, that we, uh, had a whole conversation, but man, there's some, there were some good beers there, but I mean, that is by far not even the coolest thing that happened. What happened to us, uh, towards the end, Bob, I'm going to let you, uh, Oh yeah, we uh ran into uh Chris Mason. Uh talked to him for a bit. No uh deal. yeah, we'll be getting him on the show eventually. Oh, no uh, big deal. Be a good time. No big deal, right? I mean <sighs> <laughs> just us. So, just... Yeah. So I mean I'm sure I you know, listen, I'm sure he was honored to meet us, but you know we, uh... <laughs> 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 Yeah, man. He he seemed like it. He it was weird. We'd only had a few beers, and he kept doing this. Oh, he kept doing this over our heads, and I mean, I don't know who he was talking yeah. to because all there was behind us was security guard and cops. So I don't know what that was about. <laughs> um, but uh, no, he was a he was super super gracious, super cool guy. Uh, you know, uh, super but, honored to yeah. meet him. But yeah, maybe we eventually we do we, we we talked about doing another beer side chats, and we and we have to have a guest, so maybe we. Get, get, get our, a beer side chat so, at some point uh somewhere and i mean and have him on we, the show if we, if we could fit him into our schedule we'll see what yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see, see what, what we can do <laughs> but uh all right so let's move into the news oh oh wait check. we got a fit check, check. uh no, nothing special i got it just got a, cl- oh, a classic jersey and today is the last episode well recording this uh the last pretty much last couple days of june so uh, happy Pride Month to all those who celebrate and to everyone. Uh, so I got my Pride uh, Smashville hat on. Nice, nice. I wasn't thinking, uh, you know, I didn't think about I didn't think about it. You know, obviously, happy Pride Month. Uh, and then I was, you, you know, picking out the old fit for the recording. And I was grabbing a hat and I said, oh, let me do the Expos hat. And Stephanie was like, oh, that's perfect. Because, you know, Fourth of July is coming up. And I was like, this is a Canadian hat. So, <laughs> so nothing, not, I mean, great idea, but did not think about that at all. I was, <laughs> so, you know, got the old, uh, got the old Montreal Expos hat, bro. You know me, you know what I love, uh, love a good old school and you know, the, yeah. the, the vineyard vines, you know, fish and shirt, you know, got plenty of airflow, uh, you know, the nice. heat, you know, you gotta have, gotta have that for the heat. I mean, I got the fish and shorts on too, obviously, because, I do almost a little to zero fishing, so I keep the gear around just in case. Yeah. One day yeah. I switch up my game, and uh, I'm just a fisher. <laughs> I'm just a bigger fisherman than I than I have been. So, <laughs> all right, let's head on into the news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice. It's time for news from inside the boards. Okay, the Avs have won the Stanley Cup. We're going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about that. That's our main topic of the day. 
but what a great uh you know Stanley Cup from great. first round to last round it just just the greatest trophy tournament in the world absolutely amazing so much fun i'm sad it's over the the postseason hockey depression hasn't really hit me yet no not yet but it's going to here soon no yeah. i mean you may um you may- you made such a you made a really you made a great point. I mean, hey, uh, great the the greatest playoffs happened and now they're over. I, selfishly, obviously, I'm sad that they're over just because watching you know hockey is fun and I, I like hockey and we started a whole podcast. But mostly, like when Stanley Cup playoffs happen, our show doc and show preparation is easy money especially in the early rounds yeah. where we can spend like 40 minutes just talking about matchups and then uh then yeah. moving on to a different matchup and then rolling back to that same matchup and yeah. continuing to talk about it um so you know obviously the off season for us while we never have any shortage of, of things to say uh does become a, a little more uh tedious in the in the front end prep <laughs> that we have to actually yeah. think of things to, yeah. to actually talk and about. Considering considering last week was the official first day of summer, I think that means we have to get back to summer of thought. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, uh unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately, Bobby, you are right. We are gonna have to <laughs> just bite the bullet and uh try to <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, the thought of it, if if James Bond could fly through my window right now and just shoot me, I'm, (laughs) I'm more interested in that than getting back to it. But again, we've told people we're going to do the summer of Bond. So I guess lock it up next week. We will, we will do a, do a James Bond for (laughs) you. All right. Uh, Shea Weber. Uh, this happened about two weeks ago. We kept forgetting to put it to the doc. I've had it written down in front of me. And finally today, I actually looked down and said, oh, hey, I, I forgot all that was on my notepad. Shea Weber to the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, I think on it, that's good for the Preds. I think that if he had retired, it would have docked them a lot of money. And when they are in the midst of contract negotiations with Philip Forsberg, they needed to not even, lose that money. Even if he even if you choose to to retire, we had like had some payout on it. Uh, I guess oh, guar- yeah. I guess some guaranteed money or something. A lot. I think uh, I'll look it up, but I think it was like a shit ton. And as long as he's still, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to just type in Shea Weber Predators contract. Um, because you uh, don't know blah, blah, blah. how. To, because you don't know. Here how to we do. go. So well, okay. So here here is this is this is from when he got injured uh, last year. Uh, Nashville would be on the hook for near five million cap penalty if former captain retires. Five mm. million cap penalty is rough. That is, yeah, that's a big cap hit. Is it? I mean, is that just carry year to year, whatever year he does? As part of the fourteen-year, one hundred and ten million contract the Predators signed Weber to in two thousand twelve, that matched an offer sheet he had signed with the Flyers. Nashville opened itself to possible future penalties under the cap recapture, which was created to defer teams from evading the salary cap under the previous CBA with front-loaded contracts. But this will, but this will be his lap, and this is it. I mean, he plays the he's not he got traded to Vegas, and if does, yes, if retire, Weber retires before contract. his contract expires, the Predators will t- be tagged with a four point nine million cap hit through the twenty twenty six season when the contract expires. His contract expires in twenty twenty six. Nashville would then be looking at a six point nine million in dead money of an eighty one point one million cap mm-hmm. after after paying yeah the Cal- Cal- So uh, his contract ends in twenty twenty six. So a couple sure. years. That's uh so we just have to hope he stays healthy. Yeah. And when he was in Montreal, that was a little easier. Now that he's in our conference, it's like yeah, we always right. hope he stays healthy, but it's like, man, let's let's calm it down though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it doesn't even sound like we're worried I mean, obviously, Shea Weber, you know, a hero of the town. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. You know, I mean, it doesn't sound like we're worried about his health or not health. But it just sounds like we just want him to be rostered somewhere. Just, yeah. <laughs> just keep moving from team to team, buddy. Keep signing on. Worst case scenario, we just put him in Milwaukee if we absolutely have to. That's what I'm saying. We'll take you back, buddy. Come on. Well, it sounds like we'll just still be paying the guy uh, big money to yeah. go hang out in Milwaukee. So might as well have him on the team <laughs> to sell some jerseys, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, so that there's not much as far as NHL news. Uh, sure, just, well, I'm sure we'll get more. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. we'll start getting more now. Rolling in now that the the cup's done. Um, so uh, let's move into outside the NHL. 
now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with news from outside the boards. Nashville beats DC United three to one. That game was happening while we were at the beer fest, so we didn't we get said, ready to keep up. With it. <laughs> we said and we looked at each other pretty early on, like, "Oh, game comes on in thirty minutes. Let's try to keep up with that." And so at seven o'clock, <laughs> at se- at seven o'clock, I checked, and the game had been over for like four hours, and that we won <laughs> three to one. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, so we kept up with it. So we did it's really good. We were yeah, we kept up, but. Uh, but yeah, hey, good, good, good win. Um, su- super yeah. excited. You coming? We're co- you going to the game on Sunday, right? We discussed on the this? third. Yes, the third. Yeah. Yes, we discussed it. I'm going. Yeah, that's Sunday. So, okay. Yeah, that's Sunday, buddy. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm super excited for that. Um, World Cup 2026 cities. Uh, we we kind of briefly talked about it a little bit uh, in regards to Nashville not being part of it. Um, I think you have an article that goes into more detail about it. Yeah, so I told like, like I told you, it is uh, North American. It's not you know any sp- any particular country. Um, and for those of you that are not aware, North America is not all- only the United States of America. There are other countries a part of that, uh, namely oh shit, namely uh, Canada and Mexico. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. That's crazy. I know, but there's eleven U.S. cities. Two Canadian cities, three uh, three Mexican cities that that will all be participating. Uh, guess what? Best news of all is there are going to be no slave labor deaths in creating any of these already existent um, stadiums. Unlike uh, going to Qatar, just wanted to throw that out there. Well, hold on, we should make sure. We should fact check that and see when the you know, some of the American stadiums when the oldest one was built. They're already built. <laughs> they were they were already built, so they weren't. So whether or not the deaths, not, the there's slave, no slave deaths the for slave this, labor, the for slave labor and the deaths were not caused specifically because of the World Cup. Qatar it created like 16, you know, stadiums that uh, I would imagine probably will not get used a lot after. The so World here's Cup. my question: It said. And this is more of a this is a kind of a pedantic question. Mm-hmm. The North America also has like twenty three other countries in it. Yeah. Are any well, of we're these talking about? Be- we're talking about the real North America, though. Okay, well, I just didn't know if like we're gonna see yeah. games in Jamaica, Honduras, or Guatemala, Haiti. Yeah, no, that's like that's, Costa Rica, that's, Cuba. That's Central America. Okay, and no, they don't count. Okay, well, yeah, no, they're it's, technically it's not, they're I mean, technically they're technically. Uh, Yes, I hear what you're saying, Bob, for sure. Absolutely. But no, no, none of those. None of those countries will get anything. <laughs> As I said, the U.S. will get 11. We gave Canada two and we gave Mexico three. OK, that's about all we were willing to do. All right. Uh, so for the U.S. cities, we have Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, uh, Boston, Gillette Stadium, Dallas, AT&T Stadium, Houston, NRG Stadium, Kansas City, Arrowhead Stadium. Los Angeles, SoFi Stadium, Miami, Hard Rock Stadium, uh, New York slash New Jersey, MetLife Stadium, so New Jersey. <laughs> uh, New- <laughs> they won- <laughs> and they're like New, <laughs> they're like New York, <laughs> but no, not New York, New Jersey. Um- <laughs> uh, so I guess I should say Nashville slash Atlanta, but it'll be mostly Atlanta. <laughs> Uh, Philadelphia, the link, uh, Lincoln Financial Field, San Francisco, Levi's Stadium, uh, Seattle, Lumen Field, and then in Canada, Toronto, BMO Field, Vancouver, BC Place, uh, Mexico, uh, Guadalajara, Estadio Akron, I guess I'm saying that right, uh, Mexico City, Estadio Azteca, I know I'm saying that right. Uh, and Monterey Estadio BBVA, uh, unless that is supposed to be said somehow, and which I guess it would be Bava. Right? Is that sounded a good. B-B-V-A, BBVA. That isn't that British. Yeah, no, it may be BBVA, but I don't know if this is some sort of word that I was supposed to have, okay. know how to say. And in which case, if it was the word, it would be Bava. 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 But now maybe the B's um, are silent. Just va. Uh, I mean, and you know, I know why 
Nashville wasn't pit. I mean, we got the you got the the South kind of covered. I don't think you leave out Atlanta. I don't think you leave out Dallas and Houston with with a large you know soccer fan base. Uh, it just sucks being in Nashville and having to miss out. Uh, yeah. I think Denver, when Kansas City gets one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Denver should have gotten it, gotten it over Kansas City. Uh, but neither here nor there should be really awesome. Uh, we'll just yeah. have to decide. I'm not a fan that going. like listen. I, I I I'm not a fan that places that some of these places got it and play like Cuba or Dominican Republic where that where that's those the you know where yeah they probably. I was I was I was bigger. I was joking more. I would imagine that. Canada, um, uh, the U.S. and Mexico got together and put their bid together. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That they probably yeah. just weren't a part. You already have to have certain levels of infrastructure that uh, sure. that uh, is is even you know Cuba, Dominican Republic, maybe huge in soccer. Are they going to be able to get a seventy, eighty thousand foot state or foot <laughs> 70 80 000. they probably would be able to pull that one off <laughs> 70 80 000, you know uh you know fan stadium with hotel infrastructure uh yeah again you can say the same thing about qatar i i'm not i'm not you know i'm hearing what i'm saying but i would imagine that it would have to do with the bid process um yeah of it so yeah. i mean it would and be as cool as sofi cool. stadium is i think it would be cool for if some of the group stages they did in the rose bowl man like that would just be pretty dope yeah, maybe, but see, these are the, uh, I guess these are venues that, that will be host cities, but I don't know if this is like group stages. They may have already some other, uh, yeah. other plans. And I think I said Chicago was picked and Chicago's not on the li- this list. That's pretty surprising. Hmm. Um, that's pretty surprising to me, but I mean, I say we lock it down. I think so. I think honestly, banana, because the right? main, the main choice they have would be soldier field. And Soldier Field, from what I've read, is having some issues with uh, they're, they're having some uh, like same issues that like FedEx Field is having in, in D.C. where it's like it's just bad. It's they're not Maybe keeping so. up with it. Maybe so. I mean, that, that could be that could be the case. I, there's probably a lot of stuff that came in that I didn't, you know, that I didn't look into. That I didn't really care. I was just sad For Nashville sure. didn't get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I say we lock it down. We're going to going to Mercedes Benz Stadium, right? To watch a group stage game. For show no, no For show. doubt like yeah I yeah mean, also surprised did, did you say new orleans in there i did, did the mercedes Benz super don't get one that would have been that would have been a dope place to have one yeah i mean um, that would have been awesome we can go there i mean world yeah, Cup. Any, or no. to be honest any we event go. in new orleans we'll we'll go to <laughs> like, right i mean honestly d- but to be fair bobby if we want to see the event let's have it outside of new orleans and we'll just go to new orleans separately yeah. and just and we'll just forget <laughs> that trip altogether. we'll pretend like we were going to a world cup game <laughs> you know yeah ah like, oh, uh, that world cup weekend was awesome bob <laughs> oh all right moving on gareth bale uh, formerly of Tottenham Hotspur, uh, to the uh, LAFC after his contract with Real Madrid has come to an end. He was getting an uh, outrageous 60 million euro a season, which made him the third highest paid athlete in the world. I mean, that is just an out. That is a staggering amount of money. Like, he's doing oh, my right. God. He's doing yeah. right. And at first, you know, there was some talk about whether he was going to return to his home in Cardiff to play. And he decided, nope, he's going to L.A., which I feel like two vastly different types of places to live. Cardiff, Wales and Los Angeles, <laughs> like the most polar well, opposite mean, places. <laughs> that is so that is so stereotypical and rude. You know, they call Cardiff, Wales, the Los Angeles of England. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Okay. You're embarrassing. You're you're I would ju- I would say normally if we were just out at a bar or something, I would say, Oh, you're embarrassing yourself, Bobby. And I wouldn't care. And you're allowed to do that. That's all on you. But right now you're representing both of us. And that's embarrassing. Everybody knows Wales <laughs> is is the equivalent to California within <laughs> within Great Britain. OK, so um, but it, it kind of goes to show you maybe I mean, it's uh, I, I've, I've found that the MLS is literally just retirement for 
for great soccer players that wants to, you know, wants to take a break, but knows they can't stop playing soccer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they're like, I'm going to go join a beer league, honey. <laughs> like, yeah. I, just signed, I just signed with the LAFC. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but hey, and he's probably, <laughs> yeah, and he is taking a, probably a massive pay cut. You would have to assume. Oh man, so much of a, I, you know, I would imagine it's a, it's a, it's a really massive pay cut from season to season. I would imagine that the, uh, the demand is not nearly as high. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, and I feel so like how he is could, he, uh, how is he going to get by with with, with making such yeah, little well, amount see, of money and, now? And, and, well, think about that. Think about it for him. Like he's going to get to go to L.A. And be a super rich guy that gets to enjoy L.A., but he's only going to have like eight people that are like, oh, my gosh, you're Gareth Bale. See, nobody's going to know who he is. He's a soccer player yeah. in L.A. He's been making yeah. 60 mil a year. For, it, yeah. for and that eight, those eight for people are also including the, this <laughs> LAFC fans. That was that. No, <laughs> no, 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 it's not. That was his teammates. <laughs> those are his teammates. <laughs> <laughs> that's his teammates when he's out and about you know uh so i mean you have to imagine that's that's probably a pretty sweet gig for a guy that yeah i mean i mean i don't know what his net worth is i would have to say it's over half half a half a bill right at least half a bill you've been making that much money for as well, long well if as there's one have. place we can go for a trustworthy answer it's Google. the internet the internet knows everybody's net worth. never lied uh let's see two this one is updated two days ago uh buh, buh, buh. no i value yes i value my privacy you cannot have my cookies uh uh buh, buh. the guardian reported a weekly salary of 350 uh euros uh or the quid uh a week um uh, they're not giving me the did it not just there. pull up that whole thing where it just gives you his net worth it just usually not, just not right away. Pocket. According to Marka, uh, around 112 million. Oh, okay, so uh, not half a bill, but I mean enough to enjoy yourself uh, when you're when you're in town. Although yeah. not not for much longer, <laughs> not for much longer with the way inflation's <laughs> going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Um, uh, uh, why don't you take this one? I, yeah, I, yeah. I have not done any research on this one. No, no real research. Just a couple of people that, you know, folks didn't know if they were re-signing their options. Uh, but Kyrie and Russ re-signed their options. Kyrie with the Nets. There was a lot of speculation there. Russ with the Lakers. A lot of speculation there. Uh, Kyrie going to get him 37 mil. And Russ going to get him 47 mil. So uh, nice. not, not too bad for... Uh, for a couple guys that were supposed to come in and help their teams win championships and did not do that. So, yeah, I saw that. Um, uh, I think I saw somewhere that James Harden is not opting in to renew his contract or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, he had a, he had a, con he had a contract option. Um, I think he decided not to opt in and it's going to be on uh, a free agent, right? Either UFA or maybe, I think it looks like he's doing this so that the sick, uh, so that they can sign the uh, PJ Tucker. Tucker? Maybe I don't maybe. know if that means he's just taking a hometown deal or what. Yeah, maybe. And maybe so. I don't, I, you know, yeah. like, like I just saw that this, these two things had happened. And so that's why they got the, uh, got the old uh, nod on the old uh, dock. So, yeah. so time for our main topic of the day. Clearly we're talking about Stanley cup finals, Colorado avalanche have won their first cup. In about 20 years, uh, since 2001, fun, or you can decide if it's fun, but it, here's a fact. They are now the last team on the Stanley Cup before their name gets removed in the most recent oh, fun. Uh, name uh, name on the cup. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That was fun. Uh, heck, that's a pretty cool dude. thing to see. That was uh, fun as heck. Yeah. See, sometimes they're fun. Sometimes they're just facts. Yeah, that sometimes was Sometimes they're fun facts. They dented the heck out of it, too. So I Yeah. Mean, they, that, yeah. So their names are dented as hell. <laughs> right now right i, I think mean, i think uh i think the hall that someone uh there was they said that the only team to not damage the stanley cup in the past like 20 years is the st louis blues then so, so which means what a bunch of fun. what a bunch of nerds dude nerds. what a <laughs> bunch of nerds how do you not damage the stanley cup yeah like, like 
Uh, that's like you're supposed to. I mean, you don't do it. You don't do it before you've had any champagne and you're on the ice. Obviously, that's a well. That's that, when the that that's when the Avs did it. That's I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That was a week. That was a week time to do it. But you're telling me we all watched a whole summer of Alex of Alex, Alex Ovechkin rolling around with that thing, and we don't think we think that this is the first time that it's been damaged. <laughs> I mean, oh, I think everyone on. knows that it's come been damaged. on, come on. Yeah. I mean. I mean, mentally alone, that cup has seen too much. <laughs> so Yeah. I mean, last year, I remember them saying that they had to actually kind of like step in and tell Tampa guys to calm down with it because they've been causing a little bit too damage to it. And after Tom Brady got on and was like uh, talking, I think he was talking to Stamkos. It was like, hey, uh, you guys, you want to throw it boat to boat like I did mine? And the uh, the 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 uh, the trophy watchers had to be like, so we're going to go ahead and say no to that. No, we it's say no to much a whole- different. This is much different than the Lombardi trophy. It's they're much like, bigger. They're like, we're going to be honest with you. We say no to very little. OK, you yeah. should see, you should see what we've seen put in that thing before. OK, so yeah. <laughs> we don't say no a whole lot. But we're gonna have to be. We're gonna have to get go that that no go because we're not. Yeah. We're gonna, because if this goes in the bottom of the ocean, we have to go get it. Okay. Yeah. Immediately, no scuba gear. <laughs> All right. We've been trained. Oh, if you don't this. think that Brady would be a Gronk and Gronk would just go down like a dolphin and come up with it, like <laughs> maybe would come up with it. Maybe, but I mean, why would Gronk? Gronk, Gronk doesn't care. It's not it's his gr- trophy. Oh, it's Gronk, dude. Gronk's like Gronk is taking a Gronk is taking no. A, see, I think uh, that's the thing with Gronkowski. Body is shot he, right now. He's taking after a body his career, shot right now. After Gronk's body career shot. and how many concussions he's had, he probably thinks that every shiny thing is his trophy. Yeah, Anytime he sees body shiny, he's like, "That's mine." <laughs> he's taking body shots right now. You can't tell me that you're getting this guy up off of a boat to go deep sea treasure hunting. No, that's not Gronk. <laughs> you're not going to tell me it is. I'm not going to lie. Long. That sounds like a lot of fun, and sounds like something that would get Gronk out of doing body shots if you told him want to go treasure maybe, hunting like pirates. <laughs> but you don't get to keep the treasure. You see what you I'm saying? Like, that. hey, you, you hey, can't tell you want to go? You want to go hunt this treasure that's not for you? Oh yeah. Are you? What are you going to tell him afterwards, Bobby? You're going to tell Gronk afterwards it's not his treasure? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right. <laughs> that's why I keep Bill Belichick on speed dial to, 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 when you have to tell a Gronk bad news. <laughs> what a, but, but in all seriousness, what a, what a great series. Um, just oh, yeah. ju- Tampa just outgunned, man. Just, yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's, they, they put up a good fight. I mean, the, the yeah. only one game that I think Tampa really rolled over. Yeah, game two. I mean, I, I, yeah, game two. And yeah, I think the rest, match. I mean, I think Tampa, I don't think this was a case of, oh, Tampa didn't deserve to be there. I think Tampa was the second best team in this playoffs. Yeah. And Colorado was, and I said it earlier on, Colorado is leagues above every other team. They were. We, I mean, and I want to go say, win. like. You called the win. Uh, uh, and I think my only qualm with it was a mentality thing. I agreed with you that the talent is so far above, above and beyond that if they can mentally get through this, there's nobody that can, that can win this. So, I mean, yeah, you called it, you called it in both senses though. I mean, I, uh, and now, I, and now to be fair, I threw my money, you know, we're going to talk about yeah. games, games of the week update. I did throw my money on Tampa because I felt like it was, like, that was some good odds to, to get a two time yeah. cup champion, yeah. a, a win. But yeah. uh, I mean, or is it on, because you saw how dominant I was all this season in games of the week? And you're like, you know what? I'm following smart money. Bobby killed it in games of the week. Got, got to put my money. With, with uh, I was, no, I was talking about the series winner. Why I put my money on Tampa. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but I am happy that I, uh, that I that I followed as for two. I mean, you know that I, I think I ended up winning, um, you know, betting five and winning eight dollars and ten cents. That's a good. Yeah. That's a. I mean, percentage yeah. wise, that's good. You won a little bit more than me, but not a whole lot because the abs were only minus one hundred and eighty nine. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, so uh, we. I mean, we did good. I, I mean, we, you you won. What was it? Do you know the the math on it? I, I don't know. I don't know the actual number because I made other bets, and so it's not like I had a final number. Uh, but let's see. I've got it here on the dock. Uh, the well, series two, win yeah, was two minus two for minus. Yeah, I just didn't know how much that actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. To be. Um, the only thing I lost was McKinnon, and that's just because Kale McCarr show put the rest of the league on notice that he is here. This is not a one and done rookie guy. This is a. This, and remember, if you remember, I said this back when we had the beer side chat at Mayday Brewery that Kale McCarr, I believe, is going to win numerous 
Norris trophies. You did. Yeah. And I, I mean, you and I said, it. and I, even, I said, I said, I don't know if this year, I think this year, maybe then, because this was before Roman Yossi really started taking off. Um, I, I honestly, I think, and this is a long shot. I think he could, I don't know if we've ever had a three peat of a Norris trophy winner in the comet modern era of the NHL, but if Kale McCarr stays healthy, this team stays as they are. And I think they will for a good bit. I think we could see him win back to back Norris trophies, oh, sure. maybe three and five years. I mean, this kid is what, 23 years old. Yeah. And I mean, he's out it, there it can, smoking people, dude. It can, it can absolutely, it can absolutely happen. I mean, I'm not, uh, I mean, this is, the, but to be fair, the, you know, Adam Fox, Gave us a season like that too, and has been there as well. I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, Kale McCarr is is absolutely great, and could absolutely go down in one of, as one of the greatest defensemen in in history. We got a couple of young guys there. I mean, in in in, in Adam Fox, that's that could be a guy that um, uh, I I I he's not going to make it so easy on McCarr. Yeah. you know, for the uh, oh for, for the, sure uh, for the yeah. upcoming year. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be yeah. going to be that. I think that, the difference there is the teams. Brady. I think that uh, yeah, sure. and I and I like the Rangers. I obviously I don't think they're anywhere near. I don't think they're in the same level as the Colorado. I don't think any. I don't think they are yet. I don't think they are. But yet. I they think can be right now. We've seen and I, a lot of and years. you know what? Lafreniere, as, Kako, as a, yeah, as a fan, as a, not just a fan of the sport, but as someone who's rooting for McCarr because I have put my word i have stood behind him throughout the season i think this competitiveness is good it's going to drive kale mccarr to be the best oh, you know sure. if you're if if you're the uh, only if you're the if you're the best defenseman in the league and there's not many other people who, who are competing with you for norris trophies i mean i, I, I disagree you kinda, you kinda, with you on that and, and this is where we'll diverge on opinion i disagree with that there there are guys that do not care what anybody else in the league is doing Kel McCarr is one of those guys. I mean, if uh, under your art, and I'm not saying you're making this argument, but under your argument, Gretzky would have just, you know, kind of coasted a little bit above the, you know, top echelon of the league and wouldn't have competed the way he can competed because he was so far and above. I just don't see, I just don't see that from some guys like Kel McCarr. Kel McCarr is going to be the best because Kel McCarr wants to be the best. And that's the way I, more, sure. more I see it rather than, yeah. he doesn't need that competition to come out and win a, Norris Trophy in my mind. I think yeah. that, and, I mean, and you know what, you're probably right. I mean, it, it's just unfortunately, you know, we we don't know what's going on inside these guys' head. I mean, I think when we're talking about Gretzky, I think his competitive, I think his competition was history <laughs> and yeah, himself. Yeah, he sure. he was his own competition, sure. trying to match his own records every year. Uh, it was like in some video games when you're racing your shadow. That was Gretzky. Yeah, yeah. He was just racing a shadow. <laughs> um, but. Um, but a great, a great series. Uh, ended a little differently than I'd liked, but a good series overall. Hey, always want to see a game seven. We know that rule. Yeah. But uh, going to the games of the week, like you said, you missed one. You bet two dollars uh, minus one eighty nine on the Avs series line. Won that. Uh, bet a dollar on McKinnon at the Con Smythe. Lost that. Six games at t- at plus two ten. Won that, and then Avs for two. At plus four hundred, uh, I lost the series line. I lost the Con Smythe, but I won those last two. So I, I got a winning. Uh, I had, I like I said earlier, I had eight, I won eight ten. You won at least eight ten on those last two, and then um, probably ended up with yeah. Um, yeah, and speaking of that, uh, we actually we can now talk about the uh, bracket challenge, Stanley Cup bracket challenge. Yeah, no, I don't. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, all right, so my my predictions that we made at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the round was I had Colorado over Tampa in six, so I called that. Um, the only series I'm looking through the only series I got wrong was Pittsburgh versus because I had Pittsburgh, I had the Rangers in the final four against. Uh, uh, let's see, it's kind of weird. It's not like tell me who I had. I'm guessing I had. Because I don't know who if it's crossing out who I got wrong. Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, I had Pittsburgh. You I just, guess. What's what? What were the points? What were the points? And then we. Oh, the some, points. Sorry. Uh, total points. I had 316 total points. You had 163. Yeah. So that's it. That's how we know you did a lot better than I did. Right there. I mean, you had uh, the cup yeah. winner. You had Abs winning it. So. Yeah. Now I do want to go through um the 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 most the largest uh bracket on nhl.com was the beat gretzky tnt league uh with 37,000 people in it 
uh, Gretz- Gretzky started the bracket. He had 89 points. Uh, was what his final was. Oh my um, gosh, that's bad. That's that's yeah. low. You get uh, like 80 real, well, points for signing your name. Well, he had he he had um, St. Louis beating Carolina in the final. Um, I don't I don't think he got a other than the Nashville Colorado series. He, the only series he got right it looks like was Nashville uh, losing. St. Louis beating Minnesota and Edmonton beating LA. That's the only series he got right. The only three series he got right. Um, but to put it in perspective, like my points, I had 316. Uh, uh, Paul Maurice had the highest amount of points in the country at 395. Yeah, bro. You absolutely that's destroyed this bracket. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said I didn't want to talk about it. I don't want to. I don't care. <laughs> Nobody cares, bro. You did good. You did real good, Bob. Yeah. Whoopity doo, Basil. <laughs> <laughs> no hey man seriously you rocked it uh, i mean you know we know you know we both know a lot of these things especially ones that build on well, others luck dude yeah well it's luck but like you have a good first round and then you all those possible points are there and now i think we both yeah. had really good first rounds and i think my second round is kind of where i fell apart uh whereas you just kind of kept it together and i mean hey we can we can talk about oh it's luck all you want but I mean we are competitive and we compete and we so uh, so good win uh, again got a games you know got games of the week this year you got the bracket challenge if only there was like other some sort of like pool where we had like picked players in the playoffs in which I would have yeah won. unfortunately there's nothing like that but moving on to joke of the week the weird. Corey Perry. See, I don't like this. I don't... Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me. It's time for the joke of the week. <laughs> All right. Uh, you found this one. Tell us what you've got. A nightmare. Idaho family lives in Idaho. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would that is first of all, that's that's where it starts. It's an Idaho family. Idaho family living without a roof after theirs was removed by a contractor they never hired. <laughs> I was like, um, huh? <laughs> like, how does this happen? Um, so reading into it a little a little bit about it. Uh they've been without a roof for 20 days. Um, it's a site that uh the homeowner never thought she'd come home to Uh house is covered in a tarp with no explanation except for the letter by the contractor, which says there's been some miscommunication <laughs> and they were sent to the wrong address. She understands people mess up, but now no one's taken blame for the issue. <laughs> uh, it was a mistake, a very costly mistake, and it should have been fixed. Uh, it should, it sh- just should be fixed, but no one will do it. DR Roofing LLC told the family insurance wouldn't handle it. The claim, the claims the family has tried to file with the company's insurance have been denied. In the latest letter, they said the policy issued to DR Roofing contains an exclusion for property damage arising out of an open roof condition. <laughs> Fucking insurance, uh, dude. I hate uh, insurance companies. Well, to, okay, yeah, I mean insurance for sure you're a terrible insurance company but they again there was somebody that just went and just took somebody's roof off without checking oh that guy is also bad but also how is that not how is that not why is the why is the law enforcement not involved this has to be against the law right if you and i just went over to someone's house and destroyed their roof that's so that's multiples of crime that's a a felony i'm wondering myself i'm wondering myself like Look, man, I feel what you're saying. Like, ah, it's a big mistake. You you came over to the wrong address, and like, I feel for you. And I'm not ignorance gonna, is not a defense against I'm the not, law. And I'm not going to have you arrested for stealing my roof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Just so we're clear, we're all on the same page. Nobody's blaming anybody. But I am gonna need you to put the roof back on, or some sort of equivalent. So again, I don't have to call the police for you yeah. stealing my roof. 
at least they are meeting with attorneys and they've met with attorney generals uh as well as the better well the business better business i don't know why they're meeting with the better business bro just better business to, is garbage yeah i mean when it's just a private company i mean to be yeah, fair, people pay better, to be in it but to be fair meet with the better business bureau so they can tell people that again They'll just steal your roof. This is just high level crime here. Okay. They've just come in and they've stolen a roof though. It seems like you can get away with it for a minute, Bob. So we may want to get into the roof stealing game. Okay. Hey, they're worth about 70 grand. <laughs> Ste- yeah, steal it and bro. sell it back to them. Dude, just hey, 40 grand right here, bro. We got a whole roof for you. We'll put it right back on. I mean, we spent 80 in all the materials to take it off, so we're not coming out on time. We're not good, but we see, have to well, steal like five roofs. <laughs> that's an investment, Bobby. That's yeah. an investment. You got to spend money to make money. So what a, what an absolute joke of uh, of a situation this is. And that the fact that like, I, you know, what, what should have happened at the very end of this you know, it shouldn't have been, oh, there's some people like they're meeting with attorneys and they're trying to figure out what to do with their five children that they now have a no roof home to deal with. I was wanting there to be, you know, there was a they drug this man out of his house and, you know, drug him behind the police car to the jail or took his roof. You know, he just comes home and he has no roof. They just transported this guy's roof on top of the other roof, like an eye for an <laughs> eye or something. Um, but uh, I guess we don't always live in the fairest country on earth. Right, Bob? So what a joke. <laughs> don't come steal my roof, people. I know your game. All right. Because I'll just fight you. <laughs> We're just going to fight. <laughs> Well, you also rent, so it's like you're like uh, you could just be like, all right, well, our landlord Sass is gonna come at you. <laughs> do I want do I want the peaceful Gandhi trying to fight this dude? And the Muhammad <laughs> I, do I want Muhammad I Gandhi fighting him? He'll never even swing. He'll never even swing at him. <laughs> what a joke, man. What an absolute joke. Uh, all right, let's move into our pop culture of the segment. Fair warning, there's going to be some spoilers. Spoilers! So go ahead and, and take a chance. Hit that fast forward 10, 30 seconds uh, a couple times. Oh, and uh, it, It'll be longer than are, 30. It'll be longer than 30. We, uh, we're talking Kenobi. There's going to be spoilers. Fair warning. Hello there. So y- you've been warned. Hey, what hey guys, 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 guys. There's going to be spoilers. You've been warned oh, again. Hello there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you were you were saying something before I interrupted you. I didn't want nobody to give any chance because this is usually a little quicker than we normally, you know, talk something. But we got to talk it, bro. We got to we got to discuss this. So, yeah, I mean, what an absolutely amazing series. I loved it from top to bottom. I don't know how people hated it, man. I mean, that especially that that finale. What an, I think one of the best finales we've gotten in star wars shows ever yeah I mean, yeah holy I mean, shit ah, it was it was i would say a really really good finale that really closes up a lot of loops and answers questions i would say best finale to me and i'm sorry has to be mando season two the dark saber fight with uh you know and then bo katan and then you know young luke coming in to get grogu but I hear what you're saying. That was an un. Unne- that, that is a good one. That, that is was an one. unnecessary dope ending. Okay, like we didn't yeah. need that. We didn't need that to complete our, you know, to complete our souls yeah. a little bit. Whereas that Kenobi ending was the direct result of of just so much that we've gone through in the Star Wars world. So much that we know. Uh, you know, we're we're gonna, you know just talking about what we're going to go into. What are you binging? And I'll t- I'll tell you a little bit about it. But we've been watching the Star Wars movies because Stephanie wants to watch it, and like just watching them again just reignites your excitement yeah. of like, oh, I need to watch all of Mando. I need to watch all of Boba Fett. <laughs> I need to watch all of, you know all of this again. I need to. Um, but Kenobi was just something that we as fans have been asking for for so long, right? Just more yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi. And um, it could have gone either way. It could have gone, uh, you know, this thing that we've all asked for and we all wanted, 
gone badly and we all hated it and we just talked smack on Disney for another, you know, three months or, you know, a year or whatever. But they did it. Per- they did it so well. I, I liked the storyline. I liked how it how it incorporated uh, all of the uh, of the world that I feel like we, we want to know. Do you now my question for you? Season two or nah? What are you thinking? Uh, are you, what I want or what I think is going to happen? What do you want? What do you want? I 100% want there to be a season two. Um, but I don't want it to. I want it. I think they season one, they did enough with Leia and Luke. That's we shouldn't see them again in season two. Um, because anymore. And then they're starting to dirty the water with, well, okay. I mean, how I feel like Leia didn't know that much about Obi-Wan in a new hope. Uh, to be you know like traveling yeah. around where it's like sure. rick and morty just sure, doing right. adventures in space right uh <laughs> um but i think if we see um you know obi-wan maybe maybe just doing some stuff you know uh on tatooine maybe he he's like tatooine. hanging some chicks or something like it's like a mature <laughs> like it's tvma <laughs> like he's got you know he's like going out in the nightlife and he's just like hanging out no i hear what you're saying i don't i definitely don't want it to be and, and I, I need it to also, I agree with that. I need it. If there is a season two, I need it to not be driven by anything that we already know. I need it to just be yeah. a, an Obi-Wan. Maybe, maybe if you want to pull in some, some, yeah. some of the rebels stuff, you know, the crossing past. Yeah. Or maybe it's around. because I, I don't know what, I don't know if we know how much Obi-Wan knows about order 66. Obviously he, he, he knows the aftermath. Right. I don't know if he knows. Like, okay, was this? Well, were, the, were the clones from what I've read? Chips? Does from, he well, know that? Like, well, from what I've read, that order, the Order sixty six within itself was a fail safe that was put in. That I mean, it was supposed to be a fail safe that so that they could never lose control of the clones. They could always just shut them down and stuff. But that was, I think, okay. Sy- I think that was Sifo Ds. Uh, yeah, and then Palpatine changed. Cypho Diaz, right? Whenever they killed Diaz, and then um, and then uh, yeah, Dooku started meeting with uh, the with, uh, Cam- Django Cam- with Django Fett. Cam- remember, Camino, Camino I met him. Like I met a man named Tyrannus on a moon wherever. You know what he said? Because remember, yeah. I've just seen these pretty recently. So. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think him doing some research. Uh, him just looking for answers. Um, maybe so. About like maybe I him saying, okay, what what other Jedi are out there? Because like, is, he's like, okay, is Kit where where is Yoda still alive? Is right. Kit Fisto alive? like he might he doesn't this? at this point he probably doesn't know who's alive because things went to such well. Disarray. No, he knows a lot. He knows a lot of who's alive because he went back to the Jedi Temple. So Kit Fisto, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he went back. He knows that he got the security logs. He knows yeah. who's dead, who's not dead. Um, or or if they make Kenobi, maybe if they do like the Obi like Obi Wan Kenobi. They make it an anthology series. So season two is just called Mace Windu. Okay. I wouldn't hate that. But I, so personally, I think that you could do Kenobi and do another season of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I personally think that we got season two already and or at least a good idea for it. I say that Obi-Wan Kenobi goes to Luke uh, because you know, he's in trouble and Luke has this droid that has a message for Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> and Obi-Wan Kenobi then goes with Luke back to his uncle Owen's farm. He discovers, oh my goodness, they've destroyed the whole place looking for whatever what message that they were bringing to Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan then takes Luke on a mission. They end Loving up it. saving Loving Leia. It. They Loving end up it. saving Leia. And Ooh, getting wow, wow. and getting okay. these plans, getting these plans, and actually destroying this a large scale weapon that could really change the course of the war. And yeah, then die, I mean, and then see, and then I'm gonna finish it off. I think he should die to make the story more impactful. I'm gonna yes. throw that out there. I'm gonna let you guys think now, about it. Now, here's an idea. Okay. It's a crazy idea. I know these it. last couple of movies, we've seen some amazing lightsaber duels. What if we make the lightsaber Let's fight? Slow him down. Let's slow him down. Slow him down a little say, bit. All right. Let me hit you with this. Arthritis has spread throughout the galaxy. You know, yes. and it's just like in the background. We just it, say it, that. it was the Jedi. The Jedi's main purpose was to keep arthritis. It was happening. a way. And now <laughs> that the peaceful religion is no longer. So that's just my idea. But no, in seriousness, I think that we 
I think we, I, and I talked to you about this. There's so many other stories we need told now, right? Yeah. What's up with my boy Cad Bane? What's going on with him? Tell me more about him. He was awesome in Boba Fett. He was awesome in Clone Wars. Let me know what's up with this guy. Uh, lots of stuff you could do. Man, wars of, you know, a battle, uh, um, the Jedi Mandalorian Wars. You know, there's a lot you can do. Yeah. So I hear you. I'll be all in for it. I'll be watching it. I'll be right here reviewing. I it want. It. I would love a. I would love just even like a mini series on Black Cranston, the uh, that Wookiee gladiator that uh, fought with uh, Boba Fett. Black Cranston. The I bit, thought you were the, talking about Breaking Bad. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, that would be. Yeah, sick. he's a dope here. Yeah, they got so much they can do right now, and I'm loving it. I'm loving the way they're going. I'm loving what they're what they're giving us. I feel like they're listening yeah. to what we're asking for and they're and they're giving it to us. Yeah. So and definitely give me all the Vader content. I'll take all the Vader content they're willing yeah. to give us. Just Disney keep. has absolutely killed the Vader content they've done. Dude. They really, they really have. Um and and finally, finally, they've done something that also shows us we don't have to hear this stupid garbage about Ky- Kylo Ren was he was so much stronger than anybody and ever used the force. Thank goodness we finally have Vader stopping an entire ship, bringing it back down yeah. and crushing it so we can stop on. Well, he stopped a blaster in midair. Yeah, because that was stupid. Why would you hold a blaster shot in midair when you could just throw it to the ground? That's dumb. Why would anybody else yeah. do that? You know, um, so so I agree with you. Vader is sick, man. We can't have enough. Can't have enough. So. Yeah. yeah. Down with it. All right. We're moving into what are you binging? Uh, the wife and I are finally getting around. We're going to hopefully tonight or maybe tomorrow start season three of the boys. I'm super excited. It's well into the season. I absolutely love the boys and I cannot wait to start it. But right now, we're not technically not binging anything right now because uh, Kenobi's done. Yeah. And the NHL is done. So, well, and, and I've never seen any of the boys. I've heard good things. Oh, so heard, good. Heard good. Talk. You know, I'm watching uh, the Americans with, with Steph, watching the Star Wars movies with Steph. Uh, but Star Wars movies is probably what I would say I'm binging uh, specifically. Uh, we're all the way through A New Hope. Uh, so we're about nice. to go to Empire. So are you watching them in chron- chronological order or release yes. order? I think it was going to be easier for her to understand things chronologically. 100%. Than, than, yeah. When I showed Megan them the first time, I showed, I, I've, probably, d- I've always done it. Like when, I remember in high school, I used, whenever, whenever I was sick, I'd watch it in release order, then chronological order right after, right back to back. But when I showed Megan the movies the first time, we did chronological order. Yeah. It's just easier yeah. for people and, who are not invested in it as much as we are to keep up. Well, and, and it's so funny because she keeps calling these things that, you know, that are known, known canon within the world. <laughs> I bet that's his father. <laughs> well, no, no. She knows. She knew. She knew Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker or or knew that Darth Vader was Luke and Leia's father. That was known to her. You know, the, I'm your father. That's now ne- you're never yeah. going to escape that. But at the end of revenge of the Sith, when <laughs> he goes, Anakin goes bad and goes to the dark side and becomes Darth Vader. She was like, I didn't even realize the whole time that Anakin Skywalker was the Skywalker <laughs> spot. <laughs> So, so while knowing all this, knowing she got got by Anakin, she's like, I did not see that. That's funny. So it was super interesting. Uh, and early on, one of her more one of her more favorite characters, big huge fan of Jar Jar Binks, loved Jar Jar. Uh, I mean, which you can imagine as a non fan that doesn't know anything about it it's the only guy that's providing a little bit of comic relief in the Phantom Menace. Okay. You've got slavery, you've got slavery, you've got, you know, large scale racing. Uh, you know, it's not, yeah, it's not as, uh, as fun. So she is a fan of of this pod racing, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll try spinning. That's a neat trick, you know, like just stuff like that. So, (laughs) um, but she's liking it. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of get to some of the shows. I, I, I joked around about, uh, Oh, we got to watch all of Clone Wars. Well, I'm not going to make her watch it all before we continue the movies, but I am. Yeah. Piecing them in because they are necessary. And I think she'll like them a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's into them. So, yeah. Um, All right. Let's move into uh, what's snapping your stick.
Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. All right. Kind of pretty much continuing on with our conversation we just had. I feel like the time between Mando seasons is just too damn long. I get they've got other projects they're doing, but it feels way too long. I feel like we've got like two years in between each season. It feels like. Give me more Mandalorian and give it to me now. It's too good, though, is the problem. It's such a good show. You know, I mean, it's so good. Yeah, and well, and that that, and they're incorporating him into other projects. You know, like Boba yeah. Fett. I would imagine that kind of changes the filming schedule and stuff. But I'm with you. Uh, I can't art make an argument against uh, more Mando. So uh, yeah, I did see a meme online. It was like uh, when, when Disney, uh, the Disney remake of A New Hope, and it shows uh, like uh luke doing something and then it just shows him uh walk around the corner and uh, jin Jarin is there and they they, <laughs> they put jin Jarin in a new hope <laughs> right yeah just like throwing him in there like the different places and stuff <laughs> like when they like when they cgi'd grand moff tarkin back into uh rogue one or whatever <laughs> yeah uh okay uh mine uh firework season coming up Nobody wants to see your stupid videos. I hate them, dude. They're so dumb. Don't take them. First off, fireworks are dumb in person. I don't want to watch a blurry video of them as well. Yeah. So don't do them. You know, don't do it. I know we all, we're, we always, we're a big contradictory uh, podcast because we talk, just let people enjoy things. Do what you want to do. Don't. Okay. We don't really enjoy you guys doing that. If the thing is dumb. If it's dumb, only do do cool things that we also enjoy um oh we don't have to enjoy it there are plenty of cool things that i don't enjoy but like that's true don't. that's true yeah yeah fair enough but fireworks videos you know and, all right now oh okay okay hold on hold on <laughs> hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> fireworks <laughs> fireworks videos of the fireworks exploding in the air not necessary. Nobody needs firework that. mishaps. If, you if vid- no one gets if hurt, you are fil- you are allowed to film the video of the fireworks getting lit. Because if we were to take those away completely, then we wouldn't know. We would not have uh, have the uh, the Terry video, and we all <laughs> live and thrive this time of year on t- on asking you know somebody trying to get Terry away. Terry, what is you doing? <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> So fireworks mishaps, good. Post those. Just the firework itself, not yeah. necessary. We don't care about yeah. it. It's garbage. Yeah. But all right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another week. We'll see you next week. Uh, for Brandon Bond, I'm Bobby Butler. This has been Pucks Out Podcast. Stay awesome. We'll see you next week. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pucks Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pucks Out Pod.